Alright, back for another one. Uh, this time, I think we'll do a basic uh, light cargo space plane. Just your standard sort of utility thing that'll be good for you in a career game. Uh, this one here, a, a two-seater cockpit's good for this sort of thing because then you don't need a probe core to use it for crew delivery to satellites, well, to space stations or rescuing uh, Kerbals from orbit, that sort of thing. Um, I always like to have the lights on by default because they just, you know, look better with them on. And so after the cockpit, usually the first thing in after that is a docking port because space planes, they can work as good long range things so long as you can refuel them after they get to orbit because they tend to need to burn most of their fuel just to get to orbit. And if you have a, a docking port, then you can. And the reason for sticking it up right behind the cockpit is because up the back of the plane there's usually tail fins and you know, all that sort of guff. And those things tend to get in the way a touch when you're trying to uh, dock. So you want your docking port as far away from all that stuff as possible. Uh, we're going to have a cargo bay, but next up, before the cargo bay, I'm going to put a bit of a fuel tank. Because you usually want your cargo bay pretty much on top of centre of mass so that uh, the cargo coming in and out doesn't unbalance the ship. And putting the fuel tank in front lets me move it back a bit. There we go, I'll just close that up for now to keep it tidy. Um, gonna want another one of these little short ones on the back. So I'll just put that there and then get rid of the surplus cargo bay. And then I think one of the swoopy tails, you can you can always squeeze another engine in by uh, having one of the double adapter tails, but the advantage with having a single engine in the middle is that if it's an air breathing engine, it uh, lets you run that engine on its own at extreme altitude without having to worry about asymmetric flame outs, because if it does flame out, it's just going to go straight. Uh, where is the conventional turbo jet? Oh no, I'm in tanks. Duh. All right, engines over here. Again, mod packs cluttering up things all over the place. I do wish that Squad would hurry up and bring in a, you know, a kind of show hide all mods toggle or, you know, show mod X sort of thing. It would make things a lot easier. Um, okay, we'll get some fuel on the sides as well, so I'll double that up. And, because, you know, that one turbojet, okay, well, it's enough for a small atmospheric plane. It's This is getting a bit big for a single jet. And also, we want to go to space, so we had to get some space engines on here. Uh, where's our APs? There we are. So, back on there, hold down Alt to make sure it doesn't attach to the fuselage instead of the bit it's supposed to be on. And having these uh, lateral tanks as well as spreading your fuel in a way that doesn't unbalance you so much when it drains. It also gives you some way handy to place some intakes. Um, I like these little radial things because as well as a bit of intake they give you just a little bit of liquid fuel and because you're going to be burning pure liquid on the way up you, you need a bit of excess liquid fuel otherwise at the end of the flight you're going to be left with useless oxidizer and no liquid fuel to burn it with. Um, anyway, that should do us for engines and basic intakes. What sort of wings should I stick on this thing? Um, let's have a look. I might go for one of my standard, well, my oldie standard big wing swoopy designs. It's not terribly original, but this is just a basic demonstration. So I want to go with something that I know is going to work. So, there we go, we'll start with that. And... This is not a low altitude aerobatics plane, it's designed as a workhorse to go to orbit. So we can save a bit of weight, which will get us better fuel range. Um, so I wind that down to there. Then I want to broaden the wings a little bit, come on. There we go. So whack those on the front. Wind that down, it was 0.6 I think it was. Yes. I'll just to make sure that, yep, 0.6, we'll go with that for most things. And now that I've already done that fiddly 0.6 thing here, I can just clone that across and stretch out like that. It's a little bit too far forwards. Although, 
This is a habit from before the offset tools. I should just put it on crooked and then use the tools to straighten it up later. Um, it's quicker. But I have old habits. So, let's get some control surfaces going. Whee! Zooming about. Okay. Take symmetry off for these. Which way do I want to go? Nope, that wasn't it. That way, and... That way, there we go. It's all lined up now. Whack it in place there. And... Alright, uh, sort out the mass. Come on, come on. 0.6, There we go. And... The control authority. So, it's going to be hitting the wall only because they're just ailerons. So I'll clone that control surface and put another one in there. That's a little bit low. So let's take it off. Back on. And just right. Alright, and do the same thing out here. Because I'm going to be uh, angling these wingtips up but it's a lot easier to put the control surfaces on if you do it while they're all flat. So, let's get that to there. And that one to there. That'll do. Um, Alright, and we're going to want a tail as well. So, I can use this for the tail. So I'll just clone that, turn angle snap back on, whack a bang in the center. Nope, that's the wrong way around. There we go. Put it down. Okay, I need the high tail because I've got the lateral engine, so if I have the tail down on the same plane as the wings, then they're going to get toasted by the rapier thrust. Um, they're Okay, they're just clear there, except the rapiers gimbal quite a bit, so as they gimbal up, they're going to hit them there, but I'm probably going to put some dihedral on that tail as well. So that shouldn't be a problem. And we need vertical tail fin as well. So I'll get this one here. Yeah, fiddly fiddly. Come on, nearly there. Okay, there we go. That's straight. And it's also backwards. Uh, goes you perspective. Okay, that's because I was trying to do it too far back. Or not. Let's try that. Is that straight or crooked? That's crooked. Okay, so. Uh, uh, boink. There we are. Okay, I'm not going to tempt fate by trying to drag it back. I will just do that with the offset tools. So, drag him. Back to about there. Might as well move these guys back a bit as well. Oh, ah, the whole thing's going now. They've joined on. So it looks like the rudder's connected on top of the tailplane instead of on top of the fuselage. That's good. And also, because that tailplane is on the... Ah, uh, uh, oh, no, I think it's okay. I thought the tailplane might have had a bit of angle because it's on that fuselage, but I'm not sure if it does or doesn't. It might be straight. Um, well, probably not. Probably needs just a tiny bit, and as is, if it is a tiny bit angled down, yeah, which it is, um, then it's going to force the nose down, and if I'm getting aerodynamic forcing on, rather it was forcing my nose up. So there you go. You can see it's angled or whisker the wrong way. That's more like it. So there we go. Let's move the whole thing up. Okay, because I cloned these from the wings, they're set to hit roll instead of pitch. So I'll change that over and do the same on this one. Bang, bang, and set the rudder to yaw. Come on, there we go. Um, up 
Pam, 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 pam. Okay, so now we've got the basics. We've got thrust, we've got wings, we've got a tailplane, and let's have a look at the balance of the ship. So, because we've got the fuel spread laterally and a bit forward and a bit back, we don't have a lot of uh, dry centre of mass offset. So you see that you know, the yellow ones with the fuel in, the red ones with all the fuel gone. You don't want a big distance between those because then you'll have a very hard time coming back down. But our centre of lift oh, is not quite as far forward as I thought it was going to be. Um, that's not a bad position for a stock plane or a low altitude aerobatics thing. It's probably a bit close for a cargo ship that's designed to fly to orbit. It's, there's an emphasis on stability in this sort of design. And also I just don't like the aesthetics of this punch shouldered sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is first up we will shift these tanks back a bit, get the engines back until we get that even closer. Hmm, got a problem here. The center of mass is now behind the cargo bay, but if I swapped the cargo bay over with that fuel tank, then the slightly forward biased fuel load will be even more forward biased. But I can probably counteract that by shifting the side tanks a little bit further back. So I might actually do that. So, first, oh, first we get out of the widget mode, then take the tail off, take that off, take that off, change that tank for a long tank. There we go. So. Chuck that back in. That'll keep our cargo bay nicely on center of mass, and we've still got everything balanced up pretty well. All right, um, we got our center of lift way too far to the back, but that's okay because I was planning on adding some canards. Because uh, probably because I spent when I spent a bit of time flying in stock aero when I first started playing the game. Uh, as any of you who have flown in stock aero will know, getting a space plane to space in that involves leaning on the S button to hold the nose up for 10 minutes straight. Um, so I get very sick of planes not having enough pitch authority to go where I want them to. So I've always made a habit of building planes with that, regardless of circumstances, if you tell the nose to pull up, the nose pulls up. And if you want that to happen in thin air, you need quite a bit of grunt in your ele elevators and canards. Um, bum, 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 bum. Okay, got all that right. Alright, that's build, pulled my center lift forward a bit. Um, how are we doing for mass? Everything's okay. The other way, the other thing that's going to pull my center of lift forward a bit, is remember I was saying I was going to roll up the tail plane a bit. So we'll do that. Just a touch, a oh, sod. Okay, you can see what's happened to the vertical tail. Um, that's what you get for having the vertical tail connected to the tail plane instead of the fuselage. So I'm actually gonna take that off, make a new one. Whack it on well in front, and then just slide it back instead of placing it back. So this way hopefully I'll be able to keep it uh, part of the fuselage instead of part of the tail plane. Although I'm a bit worried I might have it a bit too far forward there so I might not be able to slide it back as far as I need. Uh, so boom, boom. Actually that's straight. Yeah that's straight there. Looks like I can have them hooked onto the tail plane so long. Nope, 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 that's crooked as. Um, so we'll just get it as far back as I can there. Which is not that far. Here we go. And then... Actually, I'll get this RCA builds. Get the uh, mass markers off the 
screen so I can see what I'm doing. And there, take the angle snap off, pull that one back, about as far as it'll let me. Yep, that's all good. That's plenty. Well, just for aesthetics, we'll line up those two black lines. How's it looking now? Nice. So that's got the tailplane clear, and it'll also give me a bit of roll stability. Um, but it would have pulled away a bit of lift from the rear of the plane, so that's also not a bad thing, because I did want to uh, shift my centre of lift forward a little. There we go, it's not looking too bad. I'm going to do a little bit more too, because I want a little bit of roll up. Well, dihedral would be the more official term. I keep saying roll up, but you know what I mean. Uh, a bit of angle up on those wingtips. Partly for all stability, partly for, for ground clearance, partly because it looks cool. Um, there we go. And before I get around with fiddling all the stuff down in the bottom, let's have a look and see what Ferrum has to say. So, handles nice, all good. Uh, it takes off at quite reasonable angle of attack at quite reasonable speed. Uh, how's it doing up at the edge of rocketry? Um, I hate how the game picks up those little tooltip things from stuff as you hover over it. It's quite a nuisance. Um, anyway, uh, altitude 25 kilometres, speed mark 4.5. Bang. Clean. Perfect. Um, I have cheated a bit because this, this is a very familiar airframe to me, so I have a pretty good idea of what works and what doesn't work. Um, whereas if I was doing something brand new and experimental, then there'd probably be a lot more fiddling about with wings and things just to get everything in exactly the right spot. Um, oh, there is one thing to do though. I just noticed this big gap back here. I don't like having those big gaps. Um, hmm. Can I afford to shift the engines forward a bit? Uh, I, I can a bit because where the centre of mass is right at the back of the cargo bay there. So, shift it forward to there, puts it more to the forward of the cargo bay, that gets rid of that unsightly gap. Um, Alright, and that has brought centre of lift way up too close, but that's not a problem because I was actually looking for an opportunity to shift the wings back a bit anyway, mostly for well, aesthetic reasons. So, bum bum bum. There we go. Tiny bit more. There, all good. Um, okay, while I've got the plane over here, I might as well do the landing gear and struts and fuel lines and things. Um, fuel lines, uh, something that when you understand how the fuel flow rules work, you can do get a lot more useful with them. And why is this not letting me change the symmetry? Ah, because I've got half of a fuel line set in somewhere accidentally. Did not mean to clip that on. Um, so I'll just go there. Where did I accidentally attach that fuel line to? There we go. Um, okay, so thing is, uh, by default the fuel is just going to burn from the front to the back, which is going to take weight weight from the front, shift it towards the back, and could unbalance the plane. So what you want to do is balance it out. So the turbojet is going to use virtually no fuel. The thing that's going to drink a lot of fuel is the rapiers when they switch to rocket mode. So the fuel drain will be coming from here. So what I'm going to do is up the front here, I'm going to run a pair of fuel lines from the fuselage to the lateral tanks, because that means that now, because engines drain from the furthest tank, that means the furthest tank from the rapiers is now this one. So this rear tank is the first thing that's going to drain. So at the start that'll drain, it'll stabilise the plane a bit, and then as it moves forward and drains up here, then that little weight shift will shift back again. Should keep everything smooth. Um, okay, I could, if I really wanted, put another pair of fuel lines in from here to the turbojet to feed that, but on the other hand there's enough fuel in the middle to keep the turbojet going the whole time you're going, that you've got it turned on and if you've got to the point where you're low enough on fuel that you 
don't have any left in the center, then it's fairly easy to transfer some in from the lateral tanks. I um, also want to reinforce things a bit because we have this here. Uh, there's still a bit of a gap there, sorry, that's what I was meaning to say. I tend to lose my words a bit when I'm concentrating on something. Uh, okay, there we go. But that will keep things nice and solid at the back. And I might want to do something similar at the front. The fuel lines act as weak struts in their own right. Uh, sometimes, if I had a longer nose, I'd probably put some struts out there as well. With the nose is short, I can probably get away with it as is. Um, still, we originally came over here mostly to do landing gear. And I still haven't got around to that, so I should probably do that. Okay, first up, it's a long tail plane, so as always it needs jacked up landing gear until squad hopefully very soon get around to giving us some bigger ones. Um, but there should be bigger landing gear in the next update, so not long to wait now, and then all these little landing gear raising tricks will no longer be necessary. Until someone builds an even bigger, longer tailed plane and starts complaining about needing even bigger landing gear. Who knows? Um, mm -hmm. And once again, I have lost my landing gear. I've got some good mod pack ones here, but I'm trying to build this as a stock plane, so. Where, are, where is the stock landing gear? Urgh. I could presumably go into the new special search menu things and, like, the advanced categories and find them quickly if those advanced categories didn't have such an awful UI that I have not bothered to figure out how to make them work yet. Well, kind of gave them a quick poke and then went, this is supposed to make things easier and it's making them harder, so... Alright, anyway. Alright, let's get one up the front as well. About there should do. And... Okay, unlock the steering. You always need to do that on the front gear. You can or can't disable the brakes. If, if you leave the brakes on at the front, um, you do have to be a bit careful with not overusing them and pitching the nose into the ground, but uh, they do let you stop a lot faster. Like, as any motorcyclist will tell you, most of your braking is done with the front wheels. Um, <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me there, little hack. Uh, but... Yeah, on this one I am going to turn the front wheel brakes off though because I can do some other tricks for braking if need be. And it's not that heavy a plane anyway. Um, <coughs> Alright, okay, sorry about that. That should be the end of the hacking. Um, okay, that rear landing gear, I just put it there by default, but that's probably actually too... F yeah, that's a lot too far back. Um, you want your rear landing gear to be just behind centre of mass. So, let's pick this up and plunk him down there, chunk, alright, and okay you can see now the reason for the tallness, if it didn't have the extra height then you'd be guaranteed to smack your tail on the way up, uh, but that is enough of an angle because you want this thing only needs five or six degrees to lift off so that'll let your plane up, pitch up plenty steep enough, okay let's flip it back over, open up that cargo bay, right on top of center of mass and get the basic accoutrements in there alright, um, we'll get an SAS unit, not because it really needs it while flying in atmosphere but because it you know, makes it a bit more responsive up in vacuum um, so where has that thing gone? oh, I hate it when the game insists on putting them way down there for no reason uh, I keep saying about things I hate at the moment. This is, I'm being quite negative. This is not a game I hate. This is a game I enjoy a great deal. Um, so, here we go. Here we go. And it is improving. You know, the editor, even though it still has niggles, it's a lot better than it used to be. Um, Alright, but so we've got SAS. We also need power. So... Do, 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 do. Uh, yep, they're in there somewhere. Um... Um, where have my batteries gone? There we are. Um, Alright, uh, the rapiers don't have alternators, so if you're on a pure rapier plane, you do need to load up on the batteries a bit. 
otherwise you can run out of juice before you even make it to orbit and deploy your solar panels or whatever. Um, but this has a turbo jet which does have its uh, own alternator, so that's going to keep the batteries charged on the way up. So, you know, you could maybe even get away with just what's in the cockpit. But on the other hand, what I like to do is lock off the battery and the monoprop in the cockpit to use them as emergency reserves just in case you find yourself without power and you know your solar panel's not deployed or whatever. Um, and speaking of solar panels, I need to find some so I can put them on the plane. Here we are. I want the one by sixes so they can reach out as far as possible. Put one each side. I could put them behind the wings but then they might be in the shade of the wings a bit. Out here they'll get good sun but they're still fairly unobtrusive. Um, there we go. Alright, so there's our basic plane built and I'll put in before I don't know, I'm still I'm currently dithering over whether or not to include the whole uh, building a satellite probe to put in there process. Um, but at the very least I'm going to show you how to mount your probe if you do put one in. Um, so there we have a cubic octagonal strut which is the gaffer tape of Kerbal. You can stick those things anywhere and they give you a mounting point wherever you need one. Um, and then a clampertron. Even if you're planning on using a disposable probe that you know, you're not going to want to um, redock, a docking port is still a good thing to mount them on because they give a much gentler release than a decoupler and often you want to send things out gently, you don't want to fire them into the side of the uh, cargo bay. I'm just checking to make sure that my everything's lined up as it should be. Um, so, uh -uh, gently back, there we go. Um, is that straight? Yeah, that looks like it's properly straight on top of the uh, cubic octagonal, or at least close enough to it. Um, yeah, I think that's all good. So, yeah. Um, actually, no. I will. I've got a little bit longer. Actually, I've got as long as I like. I'm making my own video. I'm not on telly. Um, so, I will show how to do one of those uh, little ultralight probes that I tend to deploy from these cargo bays. So, first things first is find myself a nice big girder. Not because I'm actually going to use it for anything, but because I want a workbench to build stuff on. So, I'll just stick that there. Grab another one, whack it there, fold it down that way. Okay, here's where I'm going to build my probe. So, doo -doo 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 -doo, we want a nice, big, useful, fairly cheap probe core. Come on, give me the probe core. There we go. Um, I've got the sound off so it doesn't interfere with my voice recording, so it's making it a bit ambiguous at times whether I've successfully clicked on things. Um, anyway, though. Uh, okay, it's going to be a little monoprop powered probe. So I'll just chuck one of the small monoprop tanks on there. And then we'll go get some of those monoprop engines, which really need a bit of rebalancing. The massless nature of them makes them a bit overpowered, but you know, I can't resist. Uh, just, it's so cool seeing something like this hit escape velocity off a tank that tiny. Um, okay, so that's the basics. What else does it need? It needs some solar panels. And it's very useful on probe building these days to be able to switch to radial symmetry while you're in here. Makes things much easier. Um, okay, and, nope, can't rotate it that way. Uh, what I can do, I don't need to rotate it, that's right, because I'm using radial symmetry. But yeah, uh, putting some batteries on, there we go. That's probably excessive batteries and solar panels, but they're all massless, so it doesn't really matter. And these little batteries also give you nice little lights, which are handy for tracking where your probe actually is, because... You know, something as small is quite easy to lose it around on the dark side of a planet. Alright, and because just about every contact demands you have an antenna, let's get an antenna on there. Okay, you can see I'm using the symmetry 
feature to help me locate the center. So you just, when you've got lots, then you're not on the center. The closer you get to the center, the closer they come together. Get them all the way close if you can. That's good enough. And then change back to one without moving your mouse. Um, it's massless anyway, but hey, uh, for aesthetics value. Let's get a thermometer on there, also massless, so I don't particularly care. That'll do. So we have power, we have an antenna, we have a thermometer, we have a probe core. The probe core is one that has torque, I'm pretty sure, so we don't need a reaction wheel. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. What was it? With an octo. And yep, they do have a little bit of torque, and this thing's so lightweight it only needs a tiny amount. So, ah, clicked the wrong thing, undo that, okay. Let's get this probe off, there we are, bum, bum, bum. other way, nose down, Boop. one probe mounted in the cargo bay, ready to go. Um, that antenna, however, is going to poke through the roof a tiny bit, so I'll just bury that a touch. So it's a bit tidier. Okay, and get rid of our workbench. Come on, workbench, go away. I told you to go. Oh, accidentally dropped it over there. Alright, and close up cargo bay. Oh, hang on. That's the one thing I forgot. RCS and maneuvering things for this. It has a docking board, so it needs to be able to maneuver and dock. And trying to dock on just a pair of a space plane with just a pair of rapiers is rather painful. So uh, fuel tanks first. We only need a small amount of RCS fuel, so a pair of those little jobbies should do if I actually picked them up. Oh, there we are. Okay. Put those in angled. There we go. Ah. Actually, yeah, mirror symmetry, that's what I wanted. should do. That's out of the way of the probe, I think. Oh, almost. Um, what I'm going to do, just to make... I could shuffle the whole probe sideways a bit, but an easier way to deal with it all is that, and change it to local, then just squeeze the batteries in a bit tighter. All good. All clear. You want to be very careful that you don't have any part clipping in the cargo bay because if you do, when you release the cargo, the entire ship is going to break into about 50 pieces, um, which is never a pleasant thing to have happen. Okay, where's the centre of mass on this ship? Oop, that's not what I wanted. There is what I wanted. Um, okay, it's right on line with that line, so I can don't need to go through the full rigor mole with RCS build aid. I can just whack them on at 45 degrees or so, right on center of mass. And come on. Okay, is that 45 degrees or have I got them too steep? Hmm, hard to tell at this angle. Not sure. Let's have a look and... Okay, we will go through RCS build aid and see what it tells us. Um, where's its little thing gone? Ah, there. Okay, change that to translation. Then... Alright, the torque is tiny because we're right on uh, center of mass, but as you can see I've got more torque to the sides than I do up and down. That's because I do have these a tiny bit too high. So I need to go down one notch. 
and on the other side, up one notch. There we go. Uh, so now you can see it's, well apart from forward and back, uh, no, no, I still haven't got it quite straight. Uh, it's uh, needed to be two notches perhaps. There we go. Two kilonewtons up, down, left, right. They're all in balance. And cool, we're just about done. So let's give one last check on Ferrum just to make sure they haven't messed anything up while I've been fiddling about. Nope, we're still all happy there. And let's give it a name. So, what will we call it? Uh, demonstration Gull. And she's good to go. So I'll stop video here and then I'll do another one showing how to fly this thing. So, see you next time.